Have you even considered that this is just Kate's trauma talking? Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cruel summer moments. Are you even supposed to be talking to me? Aren't you and Jeanette like best friends? Oh, uh, we're not friends anymore at all, actually. You in trouble or something? Uh, no. Uh, Mr. Harris just wanted me to return Kate Wallace's scrunchie. And why should I even believe you? I'm not the one in this family with the honesty problem. For this list, we're looking at the most memorable moments from the first season of this Freeform series. In case you're not all caught up, a spoiler <laughs> alert is in order. Which cruel summer moment shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Jeanette suing Kate How would you like me to be, Denise? Although Jeanette is introduced as a good girl gone bad, we find throughout the second episode that Kate hasn't been entirely honest either. Not only did Kate know Martin Harris before her abduction, but Jeanette may be more innocent than the press and Wallace's have portrayed her. Matters become blurrier than ever when it's reported that Jeanette is filing a defamation lawsuit against Kate. A strange twist in the shocking story of Jeanette Turner, the young Texas woman accused of failing to report Kate Wallace missing last year, is that these two will now face off in a legal battle. The defendant is Kate Wallace. The allegation is defamation. As her parents argue in the background, Kate stares at the TV in disbelief. Although we still have unanswered questions about Kate, it's clear that her experiences in the basement have left her traumatized, and the torment isn't over yet. We'll straighten this out. Damn straight, I'll have that anchor's jaw! I was talking to Kate. I don't even know what the news. Kate lets out her pent-up rage with a scream, leaving us to wonder who's telling the truth. <laughs> Number 9. Best Birthday Ever when we meet Mallory, she's one of Jeanette's besties and a hater of Kate's. We didn't expect Kate and Mallory to become friends, but they form an unlikely rapport after running into each other at therapy. I'm Mallory. Yeah, I know who you are. You came to my third grade birthday party. As much as their friendship caught us off guard, it quickly becomes one of the show's most likable elements. And as her birthday keeper, I am here to inform you that Miss Wallace will not engage today in any discussion about court or lawyers or anything legal or unpleasant. While Cruel Summer isn't exactly known for uplifting moments, Kate takes a break from lawyers and parents when Mallory throws her a birthday party at the roller rink. But how did you manage to do this because this place is always packed. Well, you happen to be looking at the new assistant manager. Mallory keeps the guest list limited to herself and Kate, which is exactly how the birthday girl wants it. Olivia Holt's cover of Today sets the mood as the girls share ring pops and their worries melt away for a brief time. Best birthday ever? Best birthday ever! <laughs> Number 8. Destroying Martin's Grave In addition to reminding Kate how to have fun, Mallory also helps her to heal. Knowing a thing or two about letting her frustration out, Mallory motivates Kate to do the same. I'm over the nightmares and I'm overseeing him everywhere, but no buts. You deserve to get on with the rest of your life. Let your anger rip, put an end to this, and never look back. At Martin's grave, Kate buries the infamous pink stuffed bunny along with her deceased tormentor. This isn't enough to give Kate closure, however. She takes the shovel and shatters Martin's gravestone to pieces. Although she's still haunted by the past, seeing Martin's resting place in shambles is cathartic for both Kate and the audience. The moment is elevated by the powerful acting from Olivia Holt, who balances trauma, anger, and satisfaction all at once. Kate later remembers that she's the one who put Martin six feet under, shooting him with Annabelle. Number 7. Silent Night Are you feeling guilty? for sneaking out last night. By the season's penultimate episode, we had known for a while that Martin kept Kate captive in his basement. She wasn't down there the whole time, however. Kate spent a few months sleeping in Martin's bed, using his shower, and walking around the rest of his house. After a homesick Kate makes a late night field trip, though, she begins to see Martin for what he truly is, a kidnapper. That sounds a lot like- Like what? Like I'm your dad? No. 
Sounds a lot like you're my kidnapper. All Kate wants for Christmas is to re-enter society. No longer putting on a nice guy facade, Martin tricks Kate into entering the basement and locks the door. Where is my suitcase? It's in the basement. Although we figured this moment was coming, Kate's descent to the basement is only made more chilling, knowing the full extent of her relationship with Martin. What are you doing? Open the door! Christmas gift to bring Open the door! I only want you to bring Open the door! Christmas cheer! Martin. Number six, an affair to remember. Listen here, little miss. When you make false allegations about sins like adultery, which could ruin this family as we know it, that is very unflattering. You're embarrassing yourself. At first, we're led to believe that Kate's stepfather, Rod, has been cheating on Joy. Kate soon realizes that this isn't the case, but adultery is indeed in the air. After shaming her daughter for even thinking that Rod could be having an affair, Joy is caught with Scott the gardener. Sitting on this information for weeks, Kate finally lets the cat out of the bag. Rod isn't sure how to respond, while Joy immediately denies these accusations. I saw mom kissing Scott Jones. Oh! <laughs> what? I'm as shocked as you are. I mean, she's lying for attention, clearly. Not only that, but Joy paints her own daughter as a liar. When Kate accurately describes how her mother is acting, Joy delivers a dramatic slap. Kate, you stop running your mouth. I hardly recognize you anymore. You were being such a little brat, and you're being a bitch. <gasps> In a more subtle blow, Joy firmly tells Rod that Kate is her daughter, undermining his role as a loving parent. Joy. Rod, my daughter is lying and calling me names, and I will discipline her as I see fit. Number five, Martin takes Kate's scrunchie. Step right up, Miss Wallace for the chance to win a grand prize. As Martin Harris, actor Blake Lee does an authentic job at appearing charming on the surface while something more devious looms underneath. In the puzzle that is Kate's relationship with Martin, we're given another piece when the two cross paths at a carnival and share a fleeting flirtation. Just the way that you were mingling with the adults, I thought. I mistook you for one of them. Kate wins a pink bunny, but Martin receives a prize of his own, Kate's scrunchie, which she accidentally left behind at his booth. Hey, Kate. Are you familiar with the concept of grooming? Looking forward to it. Sometimes the most understated imagery can be the most disturbing, and seeing Kate's scrunchie wrapped around Martin's fingers definitely brings the cringes. What's that? Is that yours? Martin reluctantly gives the scrunchie up when Jeanette offers to return it. Of course, watching the obsessed Jeanette cling to the scrunchie is only a little less creepy. Number four, Jamie kisses Jeanette. You know I didn't do the things Kate's saying I did, right? You know me. Freed from captivity, Kate finds that Jeanette has stolen her friends, popularity, and boyfriend. Although Jamie tries to turn back the clock on his relationship with Kate, he's still drawn to Jeanette even amidst the allegations. Meeting with Jamie one night, Jeanette insists that she didn't see Kate locked up in Martin's house. You know I would never lie to you. I would never lie to you, okay? The two share a steamy kiss, unaware that Kate is watching from afar. Taking advantage of Kate's fragile state, Jamie later suggests that she was only imagining things. Kate, I didn't kiss her, I swear. But I saw you. We both know your memory's been shaky since the trauma. Don't you think it's possible that you didn't see what you think you saw? It takes another year, but Jamie finally comes clean about the kiss. Jeanette, in the park last summer, we kissed, and I lied to you about it. On one hand, it's too little too late. At the same time, Kate does take some comfort in hearing Jamie confess that she was right all along. I knew it. I knew it. Number three, they found Kate Wallace. The first episode is told from Jeanette's point of view, showing her evolution from nerdy schoolgirl to Kate Wallace 2.0. They found Kate. Oh my God. Do you know where they found her body? Do they know who killed her? She's not dead. 
In her absence, Jeanette adopts Kate's role as Queen Bee. The plot thickens when the real Kate is found and Jeanette appears more alarmed than relieved. Jeanette only seems guiltier when Jamie punches her in an especially brutal moment. By the pilot's conclusion, the viewer can already sense how Jeanette is connected to the Kate Wallace case. This doesn't make Kate's primetime moment any less gripping. To the girl who stayed silent, who let me endure things that I cannot erase, you could have saved me, and you didn't. Claiming that Jeanette saw her in Martin's house and did nothing to help, Kate declares war on the girl who usurped her life. It's a riveting way to wrap up the episode, guaranteeing we'd be back for more. Jeanette Turner, I hope you rot in hell. Number two, Martin and Kate were dating. We all envisioned how Martin might have abducted Kate. Maybe he offered her a ride or allured her to his house. As it turns out, Kate willingly showed up on Martin's doorstep following a fight with her parents. I just feel so lonely in my own house and in my own life all of a sudden. How did that happen? Taking advantage of Kate's fragile state, Martin manipulates her into staying and an intimate relationship arises. Found you! <laughs> <laughs> you have to tag me first. Kate doesn't realize it, but Martin possesses most of the power in this dynamic. As the months go by, it slowly dawns on Kate that she's Martin's prisoner. Even then, though, she underestimates just how far Martin will go to save his reputation. How does this end? The movie? No, our bubble. Can't go on forever, Martin. As unnerving as their relationship is, these scenes effectively demonstrate how easily a young person can be groomed without even realizing it. The episode also gives Kate new nuances. Have you seen my parents around? Are they holding up? Honestly, I have been buried in work, so. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Kate and Jeanette face off. Longest red light ever. Get out of the car! Get out! Come on, my turn green. You stole my life because yours was pathetic. Come on. But you're seriously gonna come after my family's money with this lawsuit? What other sloppy seconds of mine do you want, huh? Speak! Kate confronts her mother, as if we needed another reason to despise Joy. You raised me to be blindly obedient, trusting, and open, and he took that. I know he did. But you teed him up! Jeanette meets Martin Harris. Well, this house just got even scarier. My, my dad sold this house. You're Greg's daughter? Yeah. Hi, I'm Martin. This is my house. Well. I just bought it. Kate listening to her tapes. Annabelle adds another layer to the mystery. Things got worse. Much worse. He came downstairs right before I was rescued and something was different. Something was wrong. Best friends part ways. The breakup was inevitable but still stung. Friends, they don't bully one another. It's everything you want or else. That's not a friendship. Maybe I want to make some of my own choices. Maybe I want to make some new friends. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, cruel cliffhanger. I know you saw me. And I know I didn't. The season finale delivers one twist after another as Kate and Jeanette swap stories. Although Jeanette was in Martin's house on Christmas Eve, she didn't see Kate that night. It was Mallory who Kate spotted outside of the house. You're not lying. It was really Mallory that saw me. I didn't see him. Mallory only caught a glimpse of Kate, though, and didn't connect the dots until after she was rescued. Kate understands that Mallory was only trying to protect her, and the two go from friends to something even deeper. Although all loose ends are seemingly tied up, we're given one last bombshell in the final minutes. Jeanette went back to Martin's house in 1994 and heard Kate calling from the basement. If anyone can hear me, it's Kate Wallace. Can you hear me? Martin's lost 
me down here, please help me. Unbeknownst to Kate, Jeanette ignored her cries for help and got away with it, for now. Please help me out. You're so very special. Is anybody there? But I'm a creep. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.